Hello everyone, today we'll be looking on the topic of inhibitors of DNA replication, transcription and translation. Before we look into the topic of inhibitors of replication, transcription and translation, we'll be discussing some important terminologies like what are replication, transcription, translation and inhibitors. So as you all know, replication occurs in all living organisms like acting as the most essential part of the biological inheritance. So DNA replication is the process of producing two identical replicas from the original DNA molecule and it is passed to the subsequent generations. So transcription. So transcription is a process of making RNA from DNA molecule. So it is the first step in gene expression and it is carried out by enzyme RNA polymerases. So translation is nothing but it is the protein synthesis or a process of conversion of mRNA into proteins. So inhibitor is a molecule which prevents or represses another molecule from engaging in a reaction. Now we'll be looking into the topic of inhibitors of DNA replication. So these inhibitors inhibit the DNA synthesis which is an important therapeutic strategy that is widely used to treat a number of hyperproliferative diseases, including cancer, autoimmune disorders, and viral infection. So there are several substances those inhibit the RNA primer synthesis as well as interfere with the DNA replications. So the first inhibitor of the DNA replication is the dauromycin and adriamycin. The dauromycin and the adriamycin are the synthetic chemotherapeutic agents and are inhibitors of both DNA replication and transcription in prokaryotes. So these probably act by interfering with the passage of both DNA and RNA polymerases. So as you, you can all see in the picture that these have planar aromatic ring system which gets intercalated between DC pairs of the double helical structure in the DNA and thus prevents its replication and transcription. The second inhibitor of DNA replication is ethidium bromide. They inhibit both replication and transcription by the intercalation. As with most fluorescent compounds, it is an aromatic ring structure as seen in the picture. And the main portion of the molecule is a tricyclic structure with aniline groups on either side of a pyridine. The third inhibitor of the DNA replication is the novobiosin and oxalinic acid. So generally in prokaryotic DNA, viruses are specifically inhibited by two classes of antibiotic. So one of these classes includes the streptomyces derived novobiosin and the other contains the clinically useful synthetic antibacterial agent oxalinic acid. So both classes of antibiotics profoundly found to inhibit the bacterial DNA replication and transcription and thereby demonstrating the importance of properly supercoiled DNA in these. The fourth inhibitor is the aphidicoline. It is a tetracyclic diterpene antibiotic which is isolated from the fungus cephalosporum aphidicola. So this aphidicoline inhibits DNA polymerase alpha of eukaryotes so it also inhibits the eukaryotic replication thereby. So the aphidicoline also inhibits DNA polymerase delta and DNA polymerase epsilon and thus inhibiting the both leading and lagging stand synthesis in eukaryotes. Other inhibitors of the DNA replication includes n acetylmalamide It inhibits the activity of DNA polymerase 1, 2, 3 and also the eukaryotic DNA polymerase gamma. So next is the butyl phenyl DGTP. So this inhibits the DNA polymerase 1 and dideoxynucleoside 5' triphosphate inhibits the DNA polymerase beta while the carbonyl diphosphonate inhibits the DNA polymerase 2. Now we'll be looking into the topic of inhibitors of transcription. As you all know, inhibitor is any molecule which can inhibit the role of RNA polymerase and can block the activity of transcription. So, there are both gene-specific and also non-gene-specific inhibitors are present. So, mostly the inhibitors are antibiotics which are used against the bacterial pathogens or antifungal for eukaryotes. 
So histone methylation also acts as an inhibitor for transcription and they inhibit the action of RNA polymerase or DNA helicase, DNA topoisomerase by binding to it or by producing the free radical which can inhibit the transcription. So there are two types of inhibitors, type 1 inhibitor and type 2 inhibitor. The type 1 inhibitors interact with the DNA dependent RNA polymerase and inhibit the RNA synthesis. So the enzyme which transcribes the DNA synthesizing RNA have structural differences in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So the examples in the prokaryotic cells include the streptolidocin and the rifamycin. And in eukaryotic cells, the example is alpha amnitin. So in type 2 inhibitors, the inhibitors interact with the DNA and inhibit the RNA synthesis. So the antibiotics interact with the DNA and inhibit the RNA synthesis. So examples of the type 2 inhibitors are actinomycin D, chromamycin A3 and mitramycin D. These are the structures of the inhibitors explained previously. Now we'll be looking each of the inhibitors in detail. So firstly, we'll be discussing about the alpha amnitin, which is a molecule made from the death cap mushroom, which acts as the potent inhibitors of RNA polymerases. Alpha amnitin can also inhibit the RNA polymerase 2 activity in both initiation and elongation stages. So alpha amnitin interacts with bridge helix in RNA polymerase 2. So the addition of alpha amnitin inhibitor can reduce the rate of RNA polymerase 2 and thereby transcribing on DNA from several thousands to few nucleotides per minute. The next is the rifamycin. Rifamycin binds to the beta subunit of prokaryotic RNA polymerase and this acts as the inhibitors of transcription at initial stages and it is also a bacterial transcription inhibitor and doesn't work on eukaryotics. eukaryotes. So next is the streptolidocin, which is an antibiotic that inhibits the RNA polymerase by reducing the rate of RNA chain growth. So it does not affect the fidelity of transcription. These are the structures of type 2 inhibitors and now we'll be discussing each of them in detail. So firstly we'll be looking into what are actinomycin D. So these inhibitors contain two cyclic peptides bound to the chromophoric phenoxacin ring that binds specifically to the minor groove of the DNA double helix and thus prevents it from being a template for RNA synthesis. So its ability to inhibit growth of rapid dividing cell makes it an effective agent in cancer treatment. And next is the chromamycin A3. So this is a DNA binding agent that binds to DNA at a minor groove and inhibits the DNA replication and transcription as well. So the divalent metal ions plays a major role in inhibiting this transcription process. The final inhibitor is the mitramycin A. This is a DNA binding transcriptional inhibitor and also binds to the GC-rich sequence located in the minor groove of DNA and is noted to be a reversible inhibitor. We will be looking into the inhibitors of translation. So a protein synthesis inhibitor is a compound that stops or slows the growth or proliferation of cell by disrupting the process that leads to the direct generation of proteins. So a ribosome plays an important role in the utilizing the protein dynamics on non-scales to translate RNA into proteins. So the antibiotics can bind to the 30S subunit of the uh, ribosome like uh, aminoglycosides and tetracycline inhibitors or to the 50S subunit of the ribosome like chloramphenicol, clindamycin and lymphomycin. The first translation inhibitor is the aminoglycosides and these like bind irreversibly to the 16S rRNA in the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome. So it has been proposed that some aminoglycosides prevent the transfer of the peptidyl tRNA from the A site of the ribosome to the B site of the ribosome and thus preventing the elongation of the growing polypeptide chain. Next translation inhibitor is the tetracycline which blocks the bacterial translation by binding reversibly to the 16S rRNA in the 30S subunit of the ribosome and distorting it in such a way that the anticodons of the charged tRNAs cannot align properly with the codons of the mRNA. 
final translation inhibitors that they are going to see is the chloramphenicol, lincomycin and clindamycin. These inhibitors work in a similar way. So these antimicrobials bind to the 50S ribosome and inhibits the peptidyl transferase activity. So chloramphenicol is an antibiotic which blocks the proteins but not the RNA synthesis. So it inhibits the action of peptidyl transferase and prevents the peptide bond formation while clindamycin agent disrupts the protein synthesis by interfering with the transpeptidation reaction which thereby inhibits the early chain elongation. So thereby I'd like to conclude by telling that so the replication, transcription and translation are fundamental cellular processes that govern the protein production of the cells. So these processes are generally upregulated in the cancer cells to maintain the enhanced metabolism and proliferative state of these cells. So there are numerous trackable proteins involved in transcription and translation which makes the lucrative targets for cancer drug development. So in addition to proteins, recent years have also shown that the undruggable transcription factors and RNA molecules can also be targeted to hamper the transcription or translation in cancer. These are my references and thank you guys.